Hey everyone, my name is Adian and today I'll be talking a bit about machine learning and artificial intelligence. I'd have loved to have done this talk live, but sadly due to time zone issues, this wasn't possible and this presentation you're listening to has all been pre-recorded. However, if anyone does have any questions which they'd like to ask, whether that's clarification on anything I say today, or even if it's just to help find resources and help get you into the field, then feel free to send me an email, and my email address is adndc98 at gmail.com. Before we begin, I thought I'd just share a few brief things about myself and give you a summary of where I am today. Five years ago, I too was a student at Dubai College, and I only graduated from DC in 2016. I then went to the University of Cambridge, where I studied engineering for four years. The first two years were general engineering, and I did courses in disciplines such as electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, material science, and so on. In the next two years, I specialized in information engineering, effectively computer science. I just finished my degree last summer, and I'm now enrolled in a PhD in machine learning and AI in the speech processing group still at the University of Cambridge. So let's get into the talk now and start with some basic definitions. I've said that this talk is about machine learning and AI, but what is AI? What is machine learning? And how do they relate in any way? Let's start with AI, as it seems to be a huge buzzword today. From Hollywood and the media, you'd think that AI refers to hyper-intelligent conscious machines with capabilities far beyond our own, and it is therefore a potential danger to civilization as we know it. And maybe I'm being a bit naive and I'm not taking the future machine overlord seriously enough, but I think this is quite a far-fetched interpretation of AI, with elements of the truth, but ultimately quite fictional. A more practical definition of AI might be the simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think like humans and mimic their actions. That's the first definition on Google, and I think that it's a reasonably good definition of AI. The main thing to notice in this definition is that it's very broad and open to interpretation. AI says nothing about consciousness, general intelligence, or having superhuman abilities. Instead, at the heart of this definition lies the idea of human tasks and human intelligence. So the real question we should be asking is what are human tasks and what do we mean by human intelligence? There is no easy answer for that. If you write an algorithm that plays chess well, you could argue that this is an AI. It can play a human game, a game which demonstrates some abstract sense of human intelligence, so it's quite reasonable to say that this is an artificial intelligence. And algorithms that can solve mazes, do Sudoku, or that can even play Pokemon could also broadly fall within this area of artificial intelligences. However, I think one could claim that some tasks are more inherently human than some other tasks. For example, being able to speak and communicate through words is almost a distinctly human task. We perform it seamlessly without thinking, we do it constantly every day, and it's vital for how the world functions and how it is today. Another fundamental human task might be visual recognition. Every day we gather so much visual information, our brain has to process it, analyze it, and we need some recognition of what it is that we see. And if you think about it, these tasks are actually quite tough and they require significant abstract sense of intelligence. In fact, so much so that I think often many of us take our abilities for granted. For example, if I show you this picture here and ask all of you to tell me what you see, then instantly everyone here will say that it's a cat. But why is it a cat? And how are we all so certain? Someone might try to explain it and say, look, it has pointy ears, the face is a triangular, overly thingy, its fur is cat-like too. But try to think of an algorithm that a computer can follow and where the computer itself could determine whether any image is a cat or not. The features we mentioned earlier, having pointy ears or specific patterns and textures, they're very high level features and it's very tough to even establish the degree to which they're present. And believe me, it's very, very difficult, if not effectively impossible, to hand tune an algorithm that can do well on any complex image detection or language understanding task. And for many, many years, we simply could not do the core hard AI tasks. So historically, AI was seen as a thing of the future, a set of algorithms which might be solved when we have hyper-intelligent machines, but once they master language and vision, maybe they'll next take over the world. But welcome to the future, as within the last couple of years, there's been a leap in AI performance, and in a ridiculously short period of time, we now surpass human-level performance in a lot of difficult AI tasks. The solution to mastering a lot of these AI tasks lies in machine learning. Machine learning describes an approach where we solve a problem not by giving the machine an algorithm and telling it how to do so, but by giving it data about what we want it to do and letting it figure it out. Google defines machine learning as the study of computer algorithms that improve automatically through experience and by the use of data. So let's elaborate on this a bit. Let's first think about traditional non-machine learning methods. Imagine we are given a task that we want a computer to solve. Maybe we want a robot to navigate out of a maze. In traditional methods, 
We fully design the algorithm beforehand and specify every operation that the robot should take, depending on its environment. Let's say that the algorithm we tell the robot to follow is that first the robot should always turn left when it can. When it can turn to left, it should move forward. And if it can't go left or forward, then it should move right. Finally, if it hits a dead end, then it should rotate round and turn back since that's the only option. Once we've hand designed the algorithm, we can predict exactly how the machine will operate in a given environment and know exactly why it does what it does. It's deterministic in the sense that once you've specified how the machine should operate, there's no intrigue about whether it'll be able to do so, and it's a simple question of does the algorithm work or not. Machine learning, however, works with a different underlying principle. In machine learning, we don't specify the particularities of an algorithm, but we specify the results we want to see. We give the machine maybe 10,000 examples of dogs and 10,000 examples of cats, and we say that we want the computer to come up with an algorithm which best separates these two classes. This in some way mimics a bit how we as human functions. We are never told as kids that a cat has pointy ears, oval faces, four legs, and so on. Instead, while we develop as kids, we see many cats and are told by our parents that these are cats. We then see dogs and are told by adults that these are dogs. And over time, we develop our own understanding of what makes a cat or what makes a dog. And if I ended the talk here, you may think that these machines are actually a bit worrying as if the computer on its own can learn to separate cats and dogs, then it might have some general intelligence and could be on the cusp of consciousness. However, computers today are still not magical devices. They're just a collection of transistors and electronic components. There's no inherent intelligence in the machine for it to come up with an approach itself. Computers always need to be told what to do. So in machine learning, we effectively give the algorithm many possible setups and the computer then searches its functional space for the best way that it can separate the images. It's a bit more complicated than that, as really in between the input and output, we have a very general function with a lot of modeling power, and it's then all about optimization and finding good parameters. There's no way around the technical nature of how this is done, so I'm going to quickly blitz through some details, but don't worry if you don't understand this section, as it's unimportant technical details. But this here is a neural network, and you can think of it as a general algorithm. These networks are built from many layers of simple mathematical functions like additions and multiplications, and once the parameters are all set, it acts as a, deter a deterministic mapping function which transforms inputs into outputs. Let's go through a basic example. Let's say we're given a dog's height, length, and tail length, and we want to predict how heavy the dog is. We input this numeric data into the neural network, and then we multiply the inputs by the weights in the first layer of the network and sum. Each weight is multiplied by each input, we sum the total, and it'll output the intermediate node value. We do this for all nodes, and then we do this for all layers, and we propagate downwards until eventually we get some final output. I rushed through this, but the takeaway here is that the network is a mathematical function made up of millions of simple mathematical operations. The weights of the network are parameterized, and um, for a given set of weights, it'll encode a specific function which maps certain inputs into specific outputs. And it could be conceivable that the final output for any input dog will be a reasonably good prediction of the true weight of the dog. We just need to find good weights for the model which captures the underlying function, and it's found using gradient descent and where we find good settings. I've really just breezed over this, so if you want to understand this better, it's going to need a bit more reading and personal research, but there's a statistical process behind the learning and it's not overly mysterious. In the final part of this talk, we'll briefly go over just a few examples of how far machine learning and AI has come so far and demonstrate some cool applications. To begin with, machine learning can classify images remarkably well. If models are given an input image, it can predict the correct class with very high accuracy and in many cases, better than humans can. It can even do image segmentation, which is an application where the pixels of an image are split into the different objects or textures present at that current pixel. And such a task is not just a fun exercise, but these models have practical applications and are, for example, used in self-driving cars. Machine learning also has applications beyond just classification. It can even generate data. For example, if you provide this model with two images, the network can transfer the style of a reference image to the main one, and you'll get the original image in the style of the reference image. In fact, models can even generate very realistic images from scratch and without any references at all. All these people you see here were generated by a computer and are not real people, which is a bit crazy as they're so lifelike. Another cool example of machine learning is that we can do image classification but with more complicated outputs. This model will be fed in an, Im an image and it can then generate text based off of what it sees in fluent language. And language abilities of AI don't just stop there, as some models are able to generate very well-written, long, and realistic articles from scratch. In this example, 
A model was given the first two sentences of an article, and it itself generated the rest of the article in a very fluent and impressive manner. In this last example, we mix image generation with language understanding. A model is given an arbitrary text, and it then generates an image which fits the provided reference text. And there are so many other crazy examples of machine learning. I've selected just a handful of examples which really stuck to me and are also that are easy to explain, but the field is blowing up and it's remarkable what many of these models can do. There's still a lot of intrigue in the machine learning community. However, when you understand the underlying theory, it's quite logical why the process works. And it's not a general intelligence learning what to do from scratch, but rather it's intelligent formulation of the optimization problem done by humans. Well, that's all I'll be talking about today. This was meant to just be a quick intro for a high level overview of the field, but I've barely scratched the surface, and if you want to learn more, there's a lot of amazing resources available online, so do take a look. Hopefully, though, you've got a slightly better idea of what machine learning, machine learning and AI is, and see how it's very powerful, but at the moment not quite at general intelligence level yet. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, but otherwise, thanks for listening.